Welcome back to the FlipNerd.com REI Classroom, where experts from across the real estate investing industry teach you quick lessons to take your business to the next level. And now, let's meet today's expert host. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Patrick Donahoe, and I'm the president and CEO of Paradigm Life. My, uh, my website is ParadigmLife.net. Uh, at Parent Life, we're, we're essentially financial advisors, and we do everything kind of outside of Wall Street. And that's why we love real estate, and uh, that's why I'm going to give you your guys' tip today uh, on the REI classroom. So the topic I'm going to talk about is, is asset protection. This show is sponsored by PassiveRental.com. Now, looking at asset protection, I think that most people have heard those that, that topic before, and there's lots of different strategies to uh, to execute it. But I would say, if you're a real estate investor, chances are you are going to need asset protection at some point, whether it's now or uh, or in the future. Now, looking at asset protection, I, I would say that you know these days our privacy is 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 I don't want to say compromised, but our, our privacy becomes less and less over time, uh, just with the advent of the internet and technology. And really, these days, whether it's a, an attorney or someone uh, that's knowledgeable, they can uh, they can get a lot of your your data. They can do asset searches and uh, and so forth. So the need for asset protection is is uh, is paramount. So I'm going to get into just a couple of examples uh, based on the experience that I've had with uh, with some clients, and then I'll give you some solutions, uh, more more efficient solutions. You can go about doing some very comprehensive. Uh, you know, estate planning and asset protection planning with attorneys. Uh, if you're just getting started, they may not be the best bet, uh, but I'll give you some uh, efficient solutions. So first thing is, I would say, is understanding uh, recourse law. So if you're using traditional banks when it comes to your investing, uh, uh, mortgage lending, bank lending, uh, even hard money lending, understand the laws and especially the laws that are in your states. So in the, in the United States, we have what are called uh, recourse states and non-recourse states. And really, I saw a ton of the, the recourse states uh, and the subsequent banks uh, be brutal with people that went into foreclosure and lost their properties that way. So let me give you an example. So if you're in a non-recourse or you're in a recourse state, a bank is basically able to sue you if you are if you foreclose and if there's a deficiency, which means that the the amount that they sold it for at auction is less than what your mortgage balance was, uh, plus fees and penalties and interest and so forth. Uh, they can come after you personally for the difference. Uh, they can uh, do a, a deficiency judgment. They can garnish your wages. They can seize your assets, your bank accounts, put a lien on other properties. Uh, banks really know what they're they're doing now in non-recourse states, and I think I have a list here. It's uh, Alaska, Arizona, California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Idaho, Minnesota, North Carolina, North Dakota, Texas, Utah, and Washington. Uh, these are states where you have very favorable uh, provision when it comes to recourse. So banks actually cannot uh, go after you for the deficiency. If there's a foreclosure, the only asset they get is your, uh, you know, is is the property that went into foreclosure. Um, okay, so let's say that you are in a non-recourse state. So I experienced a couple things uh, in, uh, sorry, a recourse state. I experienced a few, few kind of uh, gnarly examples. The first one was in uh, in in Missouri, and it was a, a huge development. And a client that I had had over a million and a half dollars in development money that was on this massive like. It was like a vacation retreat and compound and it had like the biggest indoor water park in the country that was going to be built. So the whole thing went to crap. And really the, uh, the, the, the client that I had, he had signed certain notes and in Missouri there's a 10 year statute of limitations. So the banks started coming after him even though the project didn't finish and really the developer went bankrupt. It was, it was a mess. Uh, but luckily, he was able to work with some some attorneys that I recommended, and he found out that the note uh, that was on the property was written in the state of Kansas. And so the governing law was because the, the mortgage note was in Kansas, and Kansas only has a five year statute of limitations. And they actually started to legally pursue him about six years uh, after the whole thing went went defunct. So anyway, understanding the note and the language of the note uh, when it comes to mortgages, whether it's conventional or unconventional or, or hard money, uh, and then also the recourse side of things when it comes to your your specific state. So a couple things that you can do to really create asset protection. Uh, first off, any good asset protection attorney is going to tell you that there's no 
there's no like bulletproof asset protection. Everything is going to you know have some some ability to to penetrate. Uh, and so if somebody is persistent enough and has enough money, then you know they'll really be able to to get into that uh, whatever the asset is. Now the second uh, so so yeah so looking at really asset protection itself, it's more about uh, just making it frustrating for the attorneys and the actual people to come after you. Uh, but a few easy ways is obviously with us, our our preference for uh, a replacement of a bank account, long-term savings, even short-term savings, uh, is a specifically funded insurance policy. We call it the max, uh, the wealth maximization account. And this is a policy that is liquid. You can borrow against it. It earns interest, and it's completely private. That's kind of our our foundational product that we use. Now another thing that you can do, and I've actually done this personally, is a lot of people, a lot of people these days will will own a property um, free and clear because either they've you know eaten uh, eaten into their ten property uh, limit when it comes to mortgages, and they're buying property cash, and they're either holding it you know in their personal name or holding it in a, an LLC. Uh, but typically, if you go through you know like title process and you can see kind of who owned it before it was put into the LLC. But a great way, instead of like spending money on an LLC and um, you know having to renew it every every single year, you know making sure that you know you're you're paying your dues and it's done the right way, right? That costs a lot of money. One of the easiest things to do is you can encumber a property with a finance company that you own and set up. So you set up one LLC, and essentially the money that is going to go into purchasing the property can flow through this LLC, and the LLC is a finance company, so it will purchase the property on your behalf. And it'll encumber it with a, uh, a mortgage, uh, essentially. So when an asset search is done, they see title, they see uh, you know who's on title, but they see a, a finance company that has a lien against title. Therefore, an encumbered property makes it frustrating for uh, you know for creditors to come after. So for so as far as a financing company idea, you know you have to treat it like a legitimate company, right? You have to do the mortgage note. You have to um, make payments, track those payments, and so forth. So, um, but anyway, that's a way. It's called equity stripping. There's a lot. There's some attorneys out there that uh, really understand that that idea. The other thing too is to go to a good asset protection attorney. You know, they'll put uh, properties in uh, typically uh, an LLC structure, uh, and you know that's a great way to go about doing it. Owned by kind of a master uh, a master holding company that's also an LLC in a state that has charging order protection. So really, again, there's so many details in regards to asset protection, uh, but um, there's some resources that uh, that I know that uh, REI Classroom has. Uh, and then we have some resources on our website as well. So go check that out at www.paradigmlife.net. And that's it for today. Remember, asset protection is important, you know, and you find it valuable once you do find problems. So it's best to just have your uh, ducks in a row, your house in order, and set up your asset protection from the beginning so that once something does happen, you're not caught off guard. PassiveRental.com is your source for turnkey, done-for-you rental properties. If you'd like to be an investor and not a landlord, please visit PassiveRental.com to learn how to purchase cash-flowing, professionally-managed rental properties in the hottest rental markets across the country. We can also help connect you with financing for your next property. Invest the easy way today and get started by visiting PassiveRental.com. Please note, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this program do not necessarily reflect those of FlipNerd.com or any of its partners, advertisers, or affiliates. Please consult professionals before making any investment or tax decisions, as real estate investing can be risky. Are you a member yet of FlipNerd.com, the hottest real estate investing social community online? If not, you can join for free in less than 30 seconds and get access to hundreds of off-market deals, vendors in your market to help you in your business. And you can start networking with thousands of other investors just like you. Get your free account now at FlipNerd.com. Please check out the FlipNerd family of real estate investing shows where you can access hundreds of expert interviews, quick tips, and lessons from leaders across the real estate investing industry. They're available at FlipNerd.com shows or simply search for FlipNerd in the iTunes store.